Hey guys, Matt here with TTPOA. I'd like to thank Siddons Martin, our sponsor, for putting this video together. And I am here with the one and only Dan Brokos, Lead Faucet Tactical, fellow E9. What an honor to have you here, Dan. How are I you doing, brother? It. I'm doing good, like always. Great conference. This is my fifth year here. I appreciate the invite. I appreciate the invite to uh, sit this close to you. You are, yeah, thanks, bro. Um, <laughs> For maybe you, 10, yeah, 15 minutes. Yeah, yeah. Um, you are like our number one instructor. You know that? Like, you're just banging it out here in Texas. Uh, you know, uh, all kidding aside, that, that's kind of a good honor. I, I appreciate that. that. That means a lot, especially Texas is, I mean, it's a great state. You guys have good funding. Law enforcement guys want to do the job. It's probably the highlight of Lead Fossa Tactical when I was told. Oh, wow. It really has the last five years and say, hey, uh, you were told you were the number one instructor last year, and especially being in this state. I, I was. I was like, hey, Juice, check it out. Um, so I, I appreciate that. It's, it, it really is. It's an honor and privilege to come out here and, and do what I do, and it's very well received, and the hospitality I get is, is, is overwhelming. So when did you hang it up in the military? When did you retire? Um, 2017, November 1st, was my official retire date. Um, of course, I hung it up about nine months prior to sort of get for retirement, maybe about seven or eight months. It was still yeah. hanging on to that last string, walking out the door, damn, we got it. We'll, we'll, we'll see ya. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, this is my fifth year um, running Life House staff. So I got you, I met you in the bar like right in 2018, so it wasn't too long. I didn't realize how close that was. Yeah. Um, so what's your take on, you know, coming out of the military and uh, teaching law enforcement? Like what did, walk me through, like what was that, uh, anything you noticed that stood out obvious in the switches between the military aspect and, and, and dealing with uh, law enforcement people? You know, it, the same but di different, I sort of speak to say that, is you're used to working with great dudes teammates and you come out and initially I thought like hey this is gonna be like I better dumb this stuff down but honestly I'm teaching the same I teach the way and teach what we did in, in the SF community so there really was no dumbing down of anything um, it was very well received and there is a lot of switched on police officers in the United States that need to go from here to here and when i was operational that's who we brought in 10 12 shooters to take us from here to here um so i thought it would be different but there was no difference there, yeah. there really wasn't which is a credit to um, the law enforcement agencies out there not that nobody's any better than anybody else but i really thought i would have to dumb it down but you don't there's there's especially in the tactics portion um, very well received, very smart police officers that get and understand tactics. So it's it's allowed me to say, hey, you know what? I was going to do this with my initial game plan for the company. Now I can do so much more knowing what I'm working with, which is which is good. For those that haven't been to Lead Foss tactical classes, like what can they expect? Like what are your your main things that you push um, within your business? I think on the tactic side, it's been. The, the CQB programs that we put out, CQB 1 and 2, and then next year we're going to actually run a CQB marksmanship course around that. Um, nice. If I do analytics, it's probably been my most popular class. So you can expect, you know, how to conduct CQB, not just a single room set, but we're talking full mission profile, bombs, bangs, the whole nine yards for, oh, wow. for, for guys okay. that have them. Um, you know, it's how to clear multiple rooms, how to take down a house, a building, a school, hallways, stairwells. It's it's the full gamut in, in four days. Um, and that's my favorite thing to teach because that's what I grew up doing in the military. Um, on the marksmanship side, you know, there's, there's tons of great instructors out there. I sort of bring a contingency aspect to it on some of the carbine and the urban gunfighter, I call it carbine and pistol, but hey, you just... You ever shot with your non-dominant eye where I, I give you a set of glasses and your right eye has tape over it? It's Yeah, that's no problem, but it kind of is a problem. <laughs> <laughs> You're down to one arm. Hey, conduct 
bolt lock re conduct a bolt lock slide lock reload with one arm can clear this malfunction with one arm I, I teach all the fundamentals but I add a contingency twist on it and, yeah and what are you going to do when things go wrong exactly yeah. exactly and, you can, and my philosophy is you, if you haven't done it on the flat range it, you should probably do it first before you come out there and it was always when I grew up it's hey it's support side day guys or it's contingency day and growing up when that was at me I was like and my times ain't fast on my support side, but in, in, in all reality, it's, it's the contingencies that I was taught. If it never happens to you, so be it. But we got to be able to shoot contingencies on the flat range in case they happen. And there's numerous cases where this has happened in the law enforcement and military community, shooting down to one arm, one eye, whatever it is. Where'd you grow up at? Erie, Pennsylvania. So how did you get in the military? What was the, um, what was the draw? Well, it's, uh, my dad, I, I grew up in a family of Marines, and I had aspirations to play football in college. And it probably could have gotten there, but uh, I mean, my dad was involved in a young Marine program. He was very active in the military community even after he retired, and pretty much told me, like my brothers, I'm joining the Marine Corps after high school. And he dropped me off at the recruiter, and for some reason, the, the Marine recruiter wasn't there, but the, the Army guy sucked me in and showed me a, bit, a, a video on exactly what I ended up doing. I didn't know it at the time. And I signed and I signed with him kind, kind of to, like, I want to say the, the outcast of my brothers, but I was always the one, I'm going to do the opposite of what my dad said. But, when, you know, when I told him, he's like, hey, the unit doesn't make the man, the man makes the unit. I'm just thankful you chose to serve. I, I, I did. I would say he dropped me off there. It is a true story, but in the end, uh, that's what I always wanted to do. That's sort of how I ended it up from my dad driving me towards the military. Did you realize someday you were going to be a sergeant major? No, no. I, there's, there's, there was no way I was going to make it this far. They just woke you up one day and said, that's it. You're our choice. <laughs> and then you realize your responsibilities just went way up, right? Yes. Um, I, I never had aspirations of rank. I had aspirations of like having my opinion put in on things and you know that that tanks that takes leadership and rank to because you know, yeah. the lowest man in the totem pole really doesn't have a say in anything when he shows up hey here's your gun do this um and, and i just really really drew a knack for that side of the military community and about year 10 i knew i was gonna stay in you know I have no regrets in life, but sometimes I'm like, eh, I could have stayed two, three, four more years. But it is what it is. You know, it's like a lot of guys, especially in your community, they don't want to move up the rank because they don't want that responsibility because they want to stay and play, right? But you, you, you'll complain about changes when now you're in a position to influence those things, and it's good to have somebody operationally that's successful because I think the troops appreciate that. Uh, they've got somebody they know that's... Uh, revered that's going to make those decisions and calls so then you can't sit there and say anymore and blame the bosses you're the boss no, yep <laughs> you're exactly right I, I was growing up and who put that regulation out who put this out then i was there i'm like now i understand that regulation <laughs> but on a good note i i could now pick and choose who i could run with so it was um, it was a good note yeah. i never considered myself an administrative start major even though that is our job but i'd be like What's a cell doing tonight on target? I'm with you guys. So it, it, it kind of worked itself out. RHIP too. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's have a little fun. So here we go, rapid fire. Favorite movie? Josie Wales. <laughs> All right. Um, hobby? Hunting. Give me another one, because I'm curious, because you were, were you juggling something? No. My hobby is, I love our little farm, my wife built juice. Um, it's referred to as Noah's Ark if you ever visit. Um, I never thought I was gonna be a farmer, but I actually like putting on my overalls and my work boots when I go off. I do complain a lot to her and she's like, oh, we should sell, I, I actually love it. I'm like, Some therapeutic I've never, about it, right? It, it is, I mean, we just had baby geese. Who, who has baby geese? I was there for the birth of three baby goats. I mean, it's all the small things you take for granted. I do complain about it, but I actually love it, being a farmer. Favorite gun? Favorite gun. 
man, I, I, I'd have to go with an AR-15. I, j- I just love the platform. I know it's boring, favorite gun. It's mm-hmm. just, that's how I grew up. Uh, I have some old guns my dad left me, but in the end, it's, if I had my choice, I'm, I'm going with a variety of platforms of ARs. Favorite book? Favorite book. Empire of the Rising Moon. You have a book? What's you that? have a book? Me? Yeah. I need to put a book together. You need to put a book together, Dan. I'll, I'll think about it. <laughs> I, I was actually, me and Juice were talking about it the other day. It's, it's a book on... It's going to be called Get Your Shit Together. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think I, I wanna, know you won't expect anything less. But. I, I'm, I'm serious about that. It was about, yeah. hey, you got ups and downs in life. I'd say the last year and a half has been a huge turnaround in my life. And I, I just, and, it, and it's it's a humorous book, but I would read it as a, hey, here's the mistakes not to make in life. And I would give it to younger dudes who were in my boat at one point in time, thinking life's about something that it's not. And nobody's perfect. Um, and I'm far from it. And there's a lot of people in Texas in the military that can be like, I, I know the mistakes Dan has made. And I would like to tell all on it. Um, and I'm humble enough to say I made those mistakes and maybe somebody can learn from me. But that's just an idea in my head. That's just an idea in my head. I'll close this out with an inside joke for you real quick. If I ever saw you in a bar, you would absolutely be the last guy I would mess with. <laughs> so, Dan Brokos, everybody. Led Fawcett Tactical. If you haven't taken his class, get with it. He's got new classes coming out as well. Thank you for what you do for the association. Thank you for being here. Uh, can't thank you enough, Dan. It's an honor and a privilege. No, thank you guys. Um, it's, it's great. I love this state. I love this organization. You guys have been great to me, and it really has been what we talked about earlier. The, the highlight of my success is, is the amount of work that I do here, and I really appreciate it. Thank you, guys.